Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And today, we're going to be making our way to the Iron Virgin Abductor's boss fight. But before we do, I want to talk about everything that we did off screen and all I really did was go ahead and change out my armor and put on the twin sage glintstone crown now you're gonna need this on for a little bit later when we go into one of the towers for the memory stones and all of that stuff we're gonna need this crown on also this crown will up your FP it's kind of why I have it on today it's gonna be useful because we have the lightning spear on and we also have the electrify armament on. Both of these are really useful in the boss fight that's going to be coming at the end of the episode. So make sure that you have those two spells on at least. Now that that's all been said, let's go ahead and talk to Rinala. Where did he flee, my sweetings? Come out from whence ye hide. There are books and light aplenty, dither not. Come out, say I, or will ye be gravestones to be better born anew? Ah, thou, is it thy wish to be born anew? To become a sweeting? Reborn of my beloved egg. So right here we have two options. One is rebirth, the other is cosmetics. Let's talk about rebirth first. Rebirth is going to allow you to restat your character. So if you're not happy with the build that you're playing with, you can go ahead and restat them to whatever build you would like. All you have to do is go to rebirth and spend a larval tier. Now, bear this sweeting into life anew. So once you hit yes, you'll get into a screen that looks just like this, and you'll be able to put your points into whichever stat you want to uh, put a build for. So what, whether you're a quality build and you're like, oh, I'm tired of doing a quality build. Let me try a strength build or let me try a caster build or a faith build, arcane build, etc, etc, etc. You can do that. Or maybe you just want some more points into vigor, mind or endurance. All right, we're not going to do any of that. Cosmetics, you can use this to redo your character, although you can do this in the round table hold. So I don't find this very useful. Let's go ahead and get out of this menu. Be not alarmed, nor afeared. I would birth thee as a sweeting, fair and fine. Let's go ahead and light this grace. And then over here is a statue of Radagon. This is Renala's husband, or was Renala's husband, until he left her for America. Over here we have a treasure chest, or just a chest in general. It's locked. We won't be able to open this till much, much later into the walkthrough. And that's all there is over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the lake facing cliffs and we're going to give the glintstone key to Thops. I'll see everybody over there. Top on torrent. By the way, fun fact about Thops, the same voice actor for Thops was the same voice actor for Crestfallen 
from Dark Souls 1. Just a little fun fact I figured I'd throw in there for everybody. Let's go ahead and talk to him. Back to learn another. Why, of course. Thank you, kind soul, for learning my paltry sorceries. I never imagined that a bluntstone like myself would have the chance to play teacher. We're going to give him the Academy Glintstone Key. Are you certain? You're willing to give your Glintstone Key to me? My, oh my. Thank you. Thank you dearly. Now I can go back to the Academy to resume my study of Glintstone sorceries. And the very stars. <laughs> <laughs> we get the emo erudition for giving him the key now let's talk to him again back to learn another why of course thank you dearly with you a blessing I will depart for the academy of Rhea Lucaria oh, perhaps one day you will pay me a visit who knows I may be a decorated sorcerer by then. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go over to the Church of Vows. We're going to turn in some scrolls. I could just zoom out to get there faster. I don't know why I did that. Now, real quick, before you go to the Church of Vows, make sure that it is not nighttime. If it's nighttime, when you go to the Church of Vows, you can very well be invaded by an NPC and they're quite tough at this level. So keep that in mind. Make sure that it is during the day when you go to the Church of Vows. Let's talk to the turtle boy. Greetings. Do you need anything? We're going to give him our scroll. Oh, what have we here? Very well, let us both learn together. Heresy is not native to the world. It is but a contrivance. All things can be conjoined. And then we're going to give him our prayer book as well. Oh, what have we here? Very well, let us both learn together. Heresy is not native to the world, all thing. Okay, he just keeps repeating the same dialogue. Over here, you get two new spells. Pretty good spells for all you uh, casters out there. And then two new incantations as well. Never used either one of these, so I can't really give you a uh, like outlook on how well these spells are. We're going to go ahead and show him our celestial dew. Do you possess any celestial dew? Then I would like to share my knowledge with you concerning the miracle of this church of vows. Radigan once cleansed himself with celestial dew repented his territorial aggressions, and swore his love to Rinala. The order of the Erdri and the fate of the moon were conjoined, and all the wounds of war forgiven. This miracle blesses the church to this day, and so you need only follow Radigan's example to restore any bond, however strained or severed, to its rightful state of harmony. To experience the miracle, kneel in the basin at the back and cleanse yourself with celestial dew. Absolution will be yours. Any bond, no matter how strained or even severed, will be put to rights. My faith does not waver. The miracle rooted in these grounds will once again mend the world. And this time, its bounty will not be squandered. If you would be Elden Lord, 
tarnished. I hope that you too will share my faith. So he was talking about this statue right over here. This is the same statue I was talking about in the last video. That if you came over here, it was in a pool of water. If you go up to it, you have a celestial dew. Any NPC that's mad at you or hostile to you, you can use your celestial dew and atone for your sins. And they will no longer be hostile or mad at you. That's all there is to it. Now we're going to come over here. Put a marker just right here. And then we're going to fast travel to the Frenzied Flame Village Outskirts. Go ahead and put our lantern on. We're going to ride over here towards these tombstones. We're going to ride close to the cliff edge over here. That way the troll won't see us. And we can safely come over here. Right here, we're going to have to use the emote erudition. But also, you have to make sure you have one of the glintstone crowns on whenever you use the emote erudition so it will break the seal. If you don't have one of the crowns on, it's not going to work. So be sure that you have a crown on. We're going to go ahead and switch out the ring for erudition. Go ahead and use it now. Notice that the helmet actually glows and makes a sound. Pretty cool. We're going to have an enemy that spawns up in just a moment here. Right here. It's like a bunch of those glintstone crowns all balled up together. Really crazy looking. We're going to go up this elevator. Right here, we're going to get the Cannon of Haima, the Gavel of Haima. Both are really powerful spells. So if you're a spellcaster, you got two really beefy spells to play around with. We're going to go back down this elevator. We still got one more item to scoop up. It's just on the outside of the tower but it is a one-way trip. That's why we didn't get it before we came in the tower. You can hop on Torrent. Don't really need to, but you can. Why not, right? Grab the crystal darts, and then we're going to go back to our map and we're going to come over to the schoolhouse classroom. Let's turn on our lantern. If we come over here, we can find Thop. He is dead. We can get Thop's bell bearing. We can get the Academy Glintstone staff. And we can also get Thop's barrier. This spell will allow you to parry um, spells, incoming spells. Really unique spell in itself. We're going to come up to the top here. We're actually going to take the lift down. Wait for the 
lift to come around. Hop on over. We're going to face this way towards the cog. We can see a little area that we can hop off onto. There is an ambush over here. So what we're going to do is try to do our best to spoil this ambush. If you can, that is easier said than done. There's one more guy over here. Pick ourselves up a golden rune three and then the avionette soldier ashes. We're going to fast travel back to the schoolhouse classroom. Turn our lantern back on. Hop back over on this platform to take the lift down. And we want to be facing this side now. This jump is extremely tricky. So my best advice to everybody is to wait until you start seeing the big crystal on this ledge. You kind of see it right there. And then you want to get a running jump and come over here. You want a running jump. If you just jump, you're going to fall to your death. So get a running jump and kind of angle yourself towards this ledge. It's really tricky, kind of finicky, and sketchy, and all kinds of stuff. It, it's, it sucks. <laughs> it, it really does. I have died to that jump so many different times. Really fast, before we go any further... We're going to put on a sacrificial twig. We do not want to lose our runes. We actually have quite a few runes. So if you have a sacrificial twig, put that on. If you don't, go get one or use all your runes before you do this. Because we're going to die. We're going to die to that iron uh, virgin. Almost said iron maiden. Uh, but that iron virgin over there. Before we do, we're going to get the long tail cat talisman. And then we have an item over there as well. So we're going to run. Don't let her kill you yet. She came pretty close. And I will explain the trick here in just a moment. Let's grab this item first. This is a lost ashes of war. That way we could duplicate an Ash of War if we like. So how this works is we want to get as low of health as we can get. And she has to grab us. She has to grab us and kill her or kill us with her grab. If she does not kill you with her grab and she just kills you outright, this will not work. So die to her grab. We don't want to get grabbed yet. We do want to take some damage, though. Hopefully this kills us. <laughs> Barely. There we go. Perfect. Now we still have our runes and we are at the Volcano Manor. Let's put on our lantern and I'm going to pop one of my rune arcs. Now, just to let everybody know, I always have 
a bunch of rune arcs. I actually sell a lot of my rune arcs uh, because I'm always helping people. It's actually a good way to get runes if you're always helping people and you have like 99 rune arcs. Just sell some and you can come back and, uh, you know, get some more. And it, it just kind of helps farming up some ruins when you're helping people. Not only are you getting ruins for helping people kill bosses and stuff, but you're also getting ruins for selling some extra rune arcs. Just figured I would uh, throw that tip in there real quick. Now, the lava does hurt you, but not nearly as bad as you would think it would. We're going to pull our bow out. We're going to kill these bats at range, mainly because I cannot stand bats. I think I've stated this multiple times. Bats are the bane of my existence in Elden Ring. And there's another one off over there. The only reason I'm killing these bats is because they are going to get in the way of getting an item. Finally got that one. Get a golden rune eight. Then there's one more. Again, you don't have to kill these bats. You don't even have to get that item over here. All the item is just over here are some butterflies, smoldering butterflies. So it's nothing special. If you don't feel like fighting those bats and you just want to run by them, I completely understand. We're going to have a few more. I'm going to kill these guys too. Usually I get hit by them. Plus I take my aggression out on these bats for being so damn annoying. Now we can freely traverse this. Again, you don't have to kill these bats, but we want to hop down over here, here, and then right here. Be careful for the slugs. They don't really hurt that much, but they can spit out some lava at you. They have a little headbutt they can do as well towards you. I'm going to hop down right here and then roll off over here roll off over here and roll off right there pull out our bow again no I don't want to aim at one of the slugs want to aim at one of these bloodborne looking guys they remind me of the guys that have like the really huge head and bloodborne and the old hunters DLC Now we can hop down, made sure that we took out those enemies. Here's a grace. This grace is going to be super handy just in case you die. If you want to rest at it, maybe you took a lot of damage or used a lot of your flasks. That's a good place to rest at. But both those enemies that we killed with our bows, or maybe you killed it with spells, uh, they are going to respawn. So just keep that in mind. Over here, we're going to get a smithing stone six. Be careful of the fire that they spit out. I guess it's not lava. It's fire. It looks like lava, though, when they spit it out. See? A little bit of lava. 
my opinion. Don't be scared to fall in the lava. Try not to, you know, sta stand in it. But if you step in it, it's not going to kill you. Just take a little bit of damage. Right over here, the floor is going to be cracked. This is going to break as soon as we step on it. We want to come down here. These are where the Iron Virgins or the Abductor Virgins are. We're going to be fighting two of them at the same time. Fun times. I'll tell you what. Fun times. Real fast. Forgot to put on my Erd Tree's favor. Let's go ahead and put that on. We'll drink our flask. We'll one hand our weapon. And then as soon as we get in here, we want to summon in Oleg. Oleg is going to take aggro on one of the abductor virgins. And we're just going to spam lightning spear as much as we can. So summon in Oleg. Go over to your Cerulean flask. One, two, drink. Keep tossing them. Woo, that was close. How you hanging in there, Oleg? Be careful, I'm gonna charge at you. And I was not careful, obviously. When they open up like that and they go to charge at you, their next attack is going to be a grab. So do be aware of that. We get the Inquisitors, whatever that last name is, or whatever that other part of the name is, I cannot pronounce it. I've tried it, probably should have Googled it, but I'm lazy, so I'm not going to. But yeah, you get the Inquisitors, whatever. It's a spear. It's pretty cool. You can try it out if you want. We're going to come over to this grace. You want to rest at this grace. If you do not rest at this grace, you're not going to be able to fast travel out of here. So keep that in mind. Rest at this grace. We can get up. By the way, you can farm that uh, budding cave moss if you need it for crafting. You can just sit at this grace, go back over there and farm it up till you feel like you have enough. Over here is Mount Gilmore or Gilmore, something like that. And this is the Altus Plateau. See the majestic Erd tree. Now, quick disclaimer. If you rest at any of the graces and the Altus Plateau, it's going to progress a lot of stuff. We're going to miss out on some of the NPC side quests and dialogues and stuff like that. So don't rest at any grace in this area. You can go down there if you want to explore it, check it out. But if you rest at any grace, you're going to mess up some of the NPC side quests. And it's not going to be very fun. Or maybe it will be fun. I don't know. That's up to you. Now we're going to go ahead and go back to the round table hold. Like always, triangle square X or whatever it is on the Xbox and the PC. Let's talk to Rogier. Ah, oh, hello. I was hoping to see you. My examination is complete. Here's the knife print back, with my thanks. Now I have a fairly good idea who performed the rite upon the blade. The person who orchestrated the Knight of the Black Knives. Lunar Princess Ronnie. 
One of the children born to King Consort Radigan and his first wife, Ronala. Demigod and sister to General Radan and Praetor Rykard. Hers was the name I discovered in the imprint. Truly, you have my thanks. But if I might be so bold, I would like to ask something more of you. If Rani truly is the one who plotted that fateful night, then she should bear the curse mark of destined death somewhere upon her flesh. I would like you to procure it for me. And then all will be laid bare. I will have the answers I have sought for so long. So we actually learned that Ronnie is Renala's daughter, which we kind of knew because of the boss fight in the last episode. But she's also the daughter of Lord Radagon. Let's go ahead and ask him about Ronnie's whereabouts. I have some idea of Rani's potential whereabouts. There's a manor to the north of the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. It is the familial home of the Karian royals from whom Rani descends. There's been talk of the old royals' vassals gathering there in recent years. Rani's whereabouts since the shattering are a well-kept secret. She hasn't been seen even once. But I suspect she might have returned to the manor in which she was born. I'm afraid there's something I must tell you. Do you know of those who live in death? The very notion of life in death defies the Golden Order. By Dee's account, these defiled fiends must be expunged. But truth be told, I seek the curse mark to save them. You may find this peculiar, but I discovered something in my examination of the Knight of the Black Knives. These souls have committed no offense. They have every right to life. Only they happen to touch upon a flaw in the order. Yes, indeed. If D knew what drives me now, he would surely boil over with rage. Or perhaps he would even feel some pity. But no need to fret. None of that will come to pass. I can tell a good lie when I need to. So we will continue his quest line much later much much later actually we're gonna go over to the blacksmith we're gonna level up some of our weapons well i took you no matter out you're up we're going to first things first upgrade our lord sworn's great sword and then we're gonna upgrade our claymore we won't upgrade it again because we need six to upgrade. Um, well, we need four more to upgrade our Lord Sworn's Greatsword. But we will come over here and upgrade our Longbow. Get a little more damage out of that. And then we're going to upgrade our Dragon Communion Seal as well. By the way, this is the blacksmith that you can come to to That'll duplicate um, Ashes of War. So if there's an Ash of War that you really, really like, you can duplicate that to put it on a, another weapon. You might be using two different weapons. I don't know. You can duplicate it and put it on a second weapon. We don't have anything else to do in the round table hold at the moment. So what we can do is come all the way over here to the Soifra, so, soy, Soifra, I cannot pronounce the name of this place, but the Soifra Riverwell, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, sorry, I'm bad with names. We're gonna come over here, hit R3. That's going to bring up the underground portion we can fast travel to this grace and then we're going to end the video right after that. Alrighty, everyone. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night, whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.